conservation. Some I've been having a problem with for a long time. Come on, Bugatti. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, look at that. Now, we actually work with a lot of endangered animals, Appendix 1, Appendix 2 endangered animals here at the zoo. And we want to actually work with even more of them. So, conservation has always been a huge part of what I believe in. I mean, growing up, you know, I watched, you know, Mutual of Omaha, of course, Steve Irwin, he came on, Jack Hanna. I mean, these were all my heroes. And of course, they were all based in conservation. And conservation has been really the cornerstone to almost everything I've done over the last 30 years of my life. But there's been a little bit of an issue I've had with why I haven't been more vocal about it. And the truth is, is that I wondered if the fact that I was a reptile breeder, which by the way, we're about to pull a clutch of eggs. This is actually a yellow belly ball python. Ooh, and it's not a very good clutch of eggs either. That is definitely a bummer. But I wondered if maybe the fact that I was a snake breeder where I was spraying animals, I was selling animals, would it actually hurt the cause, right? Would the fact that it would be negative that I was like going, oh, we need to worry about conservation, but on the same side I was like selling pet snakes and stuff like that and being a breeder which by the way this is just an absolute disaster of a clutch we've got two four good eggs and a pile of bad eggs here I tell you what that is not the way I wanted to pull this clutch we've got two four six eight ten bad eggs but that was a 14 egg clutch that's absolutely incredible but again I was worried about you know doing this type of stuff would it actually hurt if I was out there saying like hey you know we need to conserve this and preaching conservation and then on the flip side you know would people use that against me like oh he's a hypocrite right but the truth is the Florida trip really taught me a lot about why I should be really looking at conservation and in particular when I met up with Chandler's Wildlife. The whole goal is to breed every species of crocodilian here we want to make yeah. insurance colonies for every species more so right. the endangered or threatened species. Right. This 11 acres you're on right now is going to be devoted to straight up conservation work not just right breeding the endangered species, but raising funding for the conservation groups in the native ranges. Right. Like, like we just did Croc Fest recently. Yeah. Raised over $107,000 for Gary O Conservation. Yeah. Holy! I know. This All is right, the I'm thing. Going. I'm going. This is the thing. You and I and every person who touches an animal on this planet, we can get enough okay. attention to every project to make a difference. Like, right. seriously, there's never been anything like this. Dude, like, you got my number. Call we don't, me. We don't have it. to ask animal planet for permission to promote Crockfest. we get a promoter ourselves like this is the best yeah. part about youtube sorry i'm sweating i'm spitting on you that's all right so just like chandler said i don't think it's going to be a harmful thing and it's time that i just kind of step out and start really speaking my mind about conservation because it is so important and by the way i'm going to pull another clutch of eggs let's hope this one is a little better than the last one this is actually a really cool animal this is a pinstripe specter and it was actually bred to a spider super stripe red stripe so all kinds of good up and a definitely much better clutch eggs. Had one little slugger here, but the rest of the eggs look absolutely gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and get these over here in the incubator box here. One more bunch of eggs here. And then this last one, and again, much, much better clutch. Definitely put me into a better mood. There's no doubt about that. So we have two, four, six, eight, ten beautiful eggs, one slugger, and that's basically it. But I wanted to kind of tell you why you haven't heard me talk about conservation. Again, it's things like this, pulling clutches of eggs, you know, keeping snakes the way we do. I mean, I wondered, you know, I don't want to hurt the cause, right? I don't ever want to preach something and then have people come back and backlash me on it because that's the last thing I want to do. But Chandler's right and everyone else I talk to is right, is that we have a platform, right? We have a platform that reaches hundreds of thousands and millions and millions of people and we need to use that platform in order to really talk about the things that we're passionate about. And listen, we need to make sure that conservation is on the top of our list. And you know that with the Reptarium and everything we're doing now, that is like on the tops of everything. So you're going to hear me talk about conservation a whole lot more. And welcome to the vlog, Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is amazing. And speaking of conservation, Reptile Army is about that conservation too. I mean, all the proceeds go to either USR or some other education conservation type group. So you can go to reptilearmy.com. Go ahead, be part of the army. And by doing that, you're actually helping the cause that we're talking about in this vlog. Even when it comes to breeding snakes and conservation, there is kind of a correlation between the two, right? We're about to cut a really cool clutch of eggs. Actually, it's a lesser bred to a banana GHI. So hopefully we'll get some banana GHI lessers. Should be some pretty good stuff. But the truth is, is when I was a kid, when I was growing up, all the ball pythons that were in were wild caught adults. And they very rarely did well. And by captive breeding now, the vast majority of all the ball pythons that are bred around the world are actually sold captive bred. So in a way, that was a 
conservation success too, right? So sometimes when you can actually produce animals, it can actually help in conservation. Even take alligators and saltwater crocodiles and Nile crocodiles. If it wasn't for those farms captive breeding them, they were on the verge of extinction, right? So certainly breeding can bring awareness, number one, and number two can certainly bring a conservation side of it. Let's go ahead and cut these eggs and we'll talk more about it. So the first egg happens to be, what are we gonna get? It's always exciting cutting eggs, you guys know that. Oh, what do we got? Okay, right off the rip, it looks like we just have a lesser here. I think it's just a lesser. It looks like just a normal lesser here, which is fine. Again, lots of combinations of different things. Let's go. We've got two, four, six, seven more eggs to go. And again, you know, conservation is something that I just really feel very passionate about. And we have another little lesser here. Looks like, weirdly enough, no, this is a banana lesser. So we have a banana lesser in this round. I was gonna say, it looks really interesting. But, you know, again, I always have been very cautious about like putting my name on something that could potentially hurt it through my actions. And, uh, and, and now I'm kind of taking another task to that one. Let's jump into egg number three. In a way, you think that maybe someone could even watch us cut a clutch of eggs on a video and be totally blown away and then ultimately they would say like wow I want to get into snakes and there's snakes that maybe they become a huge conservationist. Interestingly enough here it looks like we have oh what do we have here we have a white snake now something interesting has been happening with all these clutches that have bothered by the banana GHI I've been getting white snakes in them which tells me that there's a pretty good chance that that banana GHI is actually a banana GHI lesser or a banana GHI hat russo or something like that because we've been getting white snakes and with the GHI and the lesser you should never get a white snake it doesn't work that way so definitely uh, a little clog in the wrench if you know what I mean but that's cool a blue-eyed blue cystic let's move on and that's part of breeding too you know you're always finding stuff and sometimes you know there's hidden genes in some of these animals right and oh this is a beautiful one right here this is actually the banana GHI lesser that thing is gorgeous and interestingly enough it does look an awful lot like the adult male so I think the adult male was actually a banana GHI lesser that's why I kept it it was such a beautiful animal so I think we just unraveled the mystery which is pretty cool but again I think about it all the time as I'm cutting this next egg anything that we do that brings attention to the love of animals really helps all animals, right? And so what we have here is a little, ooh, what the heck is this? Oh, I just solved the mystery. The banana GHI is actually a banana GHI Het Russo, because this is a Het Russo here. This isn't a lesser, this is actually a Het Russo. So there it is, mystery solved. That's why it didn't look that different. So that's why we're producing white snakes. Interesting, right? Crazy, let's keep moving on. But again, you know, if you start loving animals for any reason, there's a good chance that maybe one day you'll actually, oh, and we've got a nice GHI lesser here. Woo, doggy, that thing is crazy. But you know, think about it. You love those animals and then you're gonna start, you know, whether you're working with animals or you're donating to causes, something on that line, every little bit that that we can attract attention actually helps the cause, right? And now I'm no longer gonna hide in the weeds, guys. I am gonna full on work with guys like Chandler and other people, Savannah, all my friends, and really work on conservation projects. So hopefully I can bring you guys along on it. Two more eggs. So it's always great. Let's see, we've been hitting some bangers in this one. It's been a good odd clutch. This one is just actually, believe it or not, a normal, which is really probably the most weird animal that we could produce in that combination. One last egg. All right, here we go. Let's see what we got here, guys. One last egg. Let's hope we end on a bang here. Okay, what do we got? Looks like maybe it might be a banana GHI lesser. I'm gonna have to wait till that one hatches out, but it could be a banana GHI lesser. Regardless, really cool odds in this clutch. And I hope that, you know, as I'm talking about this, you guys kind of understand why I haven't talked about conservation that much and why I want to really make it a part of my future because internally, it's always been a huge part. I've always been a snake breeder and I will always be a snake breeder on some extent, even if I'm kind of downsizing that area and moving kind of more towards the zoo side and stuff like that. The truth is, is that I'm gonna stop being embarrassed about being a snake breeder and a conservationist at the same time. Not that I was ever embarrassed about being a snake breeder. I don't want anyone to think of that. What I'm saying is that I didn't know if the two actually missed, but they do, you know? And look at this beautiful clutch of eggs. I mean, how can I possibly not want to be proud of this? And also say that I'm a conservationist as well. This happens to be a vanilla bamboo ball python. And you can kind of see the slight difference between the vanilla bamboo and the normal bamboo. Now, this was actually a pinstripe entry that was bred 
went through a pastel vanilla bamboo woma. So we got some crazy stuff in here. I mean, we have this right here, which is a pastel. It's an enchi, it's a pinstripe, and it's a woma, and it's absolutely stunning. And then this is basically the, it's the same animal here, just without the pastel in it. So it's an enchi, it's a pinstripe, and it's a woma ball python. Then we start getting into some crazy stuff. I mean, we have a pinstripe enchi vanilla bamboo right here. Ooh, doggy, I tell you, that thing is absolutely incredible. This one actually is a pastel vanilla enchi woma ball python, and it's an absolute ripper. And then take a look at this monkey right here. This is the all gene animal. This is a pastel, it's an enchi, it's a pinstripe, it's a woma, and it's a bamboo. I'm telling you what, that is incredible. But again, I'll always be proud to be a snake breeder, but now I just think it's time to come out and really start talking about conservation. And with that said, I probably need your guys' help to decide how exactly to do that. But before I ask for that help, you know, obviously the Reptarium is all about working with animals and exposure to animals for people to really get to love them. I mean, take for instance Tiana, of course she's a cyclura, and all the cyclura are endangered to some extent. Some are extremely threatened, right? And the fact that we can actually introduce these animals to people, they can fall in love with them. And again, I remember when Steve Irwin said, people want to save what they love, right? So we have to do a good job of getting people to love these animals so that they think that they're just not like, oh, it's a reptile. We don't have to worry about it, you know? I mean, these animals are so important to everything, the ecosystem, the future of the planet. So the Reptarium is all about that, right? It's all about teaching people, getting them to touch and feel and fall in love with these animals just as much as I have my whole life, right? Now, when it comes to the help, this is what I need from you. It's like, how exactly do we go about this? You know, one of the things I want to do is start talking about it more. Listen, with platforms like we have and Chandler and Savannah and Kenan and all the other guys, if we're working together, we are reaching millions and millions of people with a message. I mean, just think of the impact that we can make, especially if we're working together, right? Not just individually, but together. If let's say the five or six YouTubers that get together that are really interested in one specific conservation project all start pushing, think of the amount of money, the exposure we can raise for that particular conservation project. Not to mention just all the other things that are going on. I know I personally want to start donating each month to a conservation project and maybe highlight that project. So what I need from you guys is to go down in the comments and let me know what you think is a great conservation project that we can start, you know, kind of promoting now and start donating to every single month. Because listen, I don't want to just talk the talk. I want to walk the walk. And this is the future. And again, the Reptarium, the Aquarium, all the things that we're doing is all going to be the future of conservation. And I am fired up and I appreciate my friends like Savannah and Chandler and all the guys that I met down in Florida really pushing me to kind of light that fire underneath me and to make me feel comfortable coming out and talking about it and not thinking that me talking about it is somehow going to hurt the platforms I care so much about. So let's do this guys. I'm super pumped up and I'm super fired about it. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, hit this playlist right over here. Watch one or two other videos. On this side, you can do me another favor and hit that subscription button. Helps me out tremendously and I appreciate you. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.